In this video, we will learn how to create this image here where we have a protein where there, the atoms are represented as uh, spheres and we'd like to make this protein embedded into a membrane like you see here and the important thing is we want it to look continuous and we don't want to have any you know that white halo that you would see so there's going to be a few steps that we're going to take to do this okay, so let me delete that we're going to start with the program called PyMol. I have it hope opened up here and uh, let's get the command prompt and so this is just a protein they, the the specific protein doesn't really matter it's an ion channel and I want to create an image and to do that is I type in this command PNG space the name of the file with so like atomic underscore test dot png you can name it whatever you want comma then you type in the width equals 3000 that's 3000 pixels wide height comma space height equals 2000 pixels tall comma space dpi equals 300 okay. whenever you click enter you'll see a progress bar as it renders this image and then you can see what the image looks like and this is again this is PyMol this is the education use so it's um, if you're a student or a teacher you can have this version for free um, and so you just type in PyMol and download it um, but you know you probably already have this uh, PyMol if you're doing this sort of thing and you get an image that looks like this if I pull up the file you can see it here, atomic test. Let me bring this uh, heavy illustrator in here. And in order to copy that that image, you just click and drag, and then you'll see this plus sign copy. And there it is. Okay. And that's the protein. If you zoom in by holding Alt and then spinning the wheel, you see it looks pretty good. The resolution's pretty good, and so we'll keep that. The next thing, so what we'd like to do is we'd like to create an outline of this entire molecule and we want it to fit pretty snugly across these atoms. Okay, we don't have, we don't want to have any gaps. Okay, so I'm gonna hold the Alt key. Hold the Alt key, and you should see a little arrow that uh, pops below that shows up below the um, your mouse. So that um, that indicates you're in the copy mode. I'm going to click and I'm going to hold while I'm dragging the mouse to copy it because I want to keep one of these versions aside and then we're going to use the outline using the image trace function on this image and we're going to overlay it on this other image. You'll see, you'll we'll explain that whole process. So first I'm going to click on this object and I'm going to click on image trace. It's going to say it's a very large image and it's going to take a long time. That's not really true, um, but we're going to click OK. And you can see it does a pretty poor job. What we want to do is we want to do a, um, we want this to be solid black. And the outside of that object uh, needs to be, um, you know, kind of similar to like this, but for the whole molecule change the property so we cl click on this up here if you don't see this uh, menu bar here click on window and go down and click on control okay now this gives us some options here we have some preset values we can click on outline okay. this is going to look even worse yeah looks even worse we're going to change a few properties here to make it look better first we want to click on fills okay and each time you change one of these settings it's gonna to have to redo this so it looks a little better here 
and we're going to unclick strokes. Okay, so now it's only going to make fills and it's only going to outline fills. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is we want to change this threshold. First, play around with it. Now, I've already played around with it, and I know that the best result is um, to do 254 for the maximum value. Okay, so the threshold is the... Um, this is the RGB number. So 255 is the maximum red, blue, or green value that can be represented on an image uh, when you're using that type of notation. So I do 254 because it's literally everything except for white. Because 255 would be white, you know, which is every pixel in the image. If I let me show you that. If I type in 255. The whole image goes black because every pixel is either white or some other color. <laughs> so I want to be 254. Okay. It's going to do everything but white. So you see that. Now the other thing is, um, you, it's maybe difficult to see here, but you see they kind of smoothen out these corners. Well, we don't want to do that because that's going to give us a halo. So I want to increase the number of paths to high 100% I'm going to zoom in so now you can see it's a lot more jagged I want to remove the noise that should have kind of barely little effect you can even add more corners that's okay so now you can see it's the most complex it can possibly be for it to trace that image you're going to just exit out of it and then you're going to click expand okay. now we're going to uh, ungroup. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. So now you have a, um, a solid object that is the outline of this other object. I'm going to drag this over. I'm going to right click, range, and go down to send to back. Okay. Now I'm going to click on the black object. I'm going to zoom in. Use holding the Alt key moving it towards it and I'm gonna position it so it's exactly overlaid. I'm gonna check it on the other side. Now I'm holding the space bar and I'm dragging and I'm clicking and holding the mouse to move it over. Now I'm gonna hold the alt key and spin the wheel on the mouse. Looks pretty good. It's hard to tell. Um, let me do this so that I can see and maybe change it to 0 0.5. Okay, it looks doesn't look perfect here, but I'm probably not going to get it to be perfect. Because if I align it there, then it can be misaligned here. Okay. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that outline and leave it over here. Should still see it in there. Okay, good. Okay, now I'm going to highlight. I'm going to select both objects by just clicking and dragging the mouse. And then I'm going to click again on this uh, outline so that it's blue. You don't probably don't even have to do that, but I just did that to be sure. Right click and, and click on Make Clipping Mask. Okay, so probably what's going on here. Uh, let's see, let's get rid of that. Oh, sorry, we're gonna just get rid of, let me unselect everything. Just delete that. Let's see if that does it, sorry. Right click can be a clipping mask. Yeah, okay, so you, so that there was a little white speck there. I'm not going to edit this out so that you can see um, what was going on. There was a little white speck there, and that was confusing the clipping mask. Um, so I deleted that so that we have only the black line, and that's around the object. Okay, and it says 
uh, whenever I clicked on make clipping mask, it says the top object is very complex, so it may not print very well. Um, that's probably not true, um, but uh, we're going to click OK, yes. See now it's fitted right around the object. We want to check to see how well it did though. I'm going to draw a what looks possibly like a membrane, something like that. I mean, I'm not advocating for this particular color in this circumstance. We just want to see what it looks like. So I'm going to right click and then I'm going to click to go down to range, send to back. Okay, so this is the result that we have. And it doesn't look too bad, except I'm kind of a perfectionist and this little white halo um, really bugs me. Okay. So I'm going to right click on that, or I'm going to click on the overall object, right click and then click on release clipping mask. It's going to return this, um, this outline back to me. Okay. And I'm going to go up to object down to path. So what I want to do is, uh, because there's that halo, I want to bring this in just a little bit, but I want to keep the overall shape. So there's a cool thing up in object, down to path, and click on offset path. Now, I would type in negative 0 0.005. The negative means it's going to be, that it's going to bring all the path on all sides a negative 0 0.005 inches. So it's going to bring it in. If this was positive, it would make it larger. The overall area of the path, the whole object would become larger. So so now if I, I can't really zoom in, but so I type in negative 0 0.005 inches and click OK. I'm going to zoom in. Now notice, this is the original clipping mask, and here's the new clipping mask. So I'm gonna delete this other one, okay? And I'm gonna click on that one. Let's just make it black, just so we can see it. Okay. All right, now we have it again, and we're gonna try this all over again. So I'm gonna highlight, I don't wanna select that back object. So I'm gonna highlight here, so I've selected this um, um, the outline and then the white trace and then I'm going to right click make clipping this did it again so we have this one little thing right here Control Z we want to delete it there try this again highlight the two objects it rarely does that I don't know why it's doing that now but it's kind of good that it's messing up so that if it happens to you, you can see what's going on. So right click again, make clipping mask. Okay, so this is what we want to see. The top object is very complex. We don't care. Do it anyways. Click OK. Okay, now this is much better. Um, you see, it just barely occasionally has that halo. I think it looks pretty good. Um, Whenever you're working with your molecule, if you want to go in another zero, you know, negative 0 0.005 inches, that works. Um, you just be a little careful that you're not chopping off some of the molecules, but it's probably more apparent if you leave some of the white than it would be if you cut off the molecule. So um, you might want to err on the side of making it a little too narrow here than too outside, of course. Don't want to do it too much and just want to be just very aware that you don't ch chop off um, some of these atoms but assuming you don't do that it will look pretty good so i'm going to go ahead and delete this other one here and that is exactly how you would do um, the atomic resolution of uh, in the spherical representation of this um, protein now one thing to keep in mind is this is a, if I double click on it, notice that this is a linked file, okay? Um, so what that means is if you change this image in this original file set, like say you actually 
save over it, you know, and pop them all, it's going to change this image here. So you may want to click embed, and then that will unlink this image from that file. So that if you make it, if you accidentally overwrite this atomic test or this, this file here, then it won't change this image at all. And, and that's something you want to be really careful for because you might do a lot of work making this look perfect. Accidentally save over that original file and then you have to start from scratch. So I, I, I when you're doing this kind of stuff, I would recommend embedding it. Okay, now, so I created this outline in this circumstance. Um, now you might remember, um, or if you just have seen the pre another video that I did where I looked in the, I showed it as a cartoon, show as cartoon, and I used this to embed into the, the, um, the, um, to the Adobe Illustrator file. Now, in that case, what I did is I did an image trace in Adobe Illustrator, I did an image trace, and then I expanded it, and then I either ignored white so that it didn't draw inside here, and I used a low color thing, or I used a high color and I didn't ignore white. And I just went in here and manually deleted each one of the white sections. Well, why didn't I just do the outline method where it would create an outline of all these things? Well, if you notice, there's these small little strands for the protein backbone. And although they may work using the outline method, I would be real cautious on that because it'd just be very difficult to exactly match those small strands and not have any halo effect. Um, so I, I didn't even try doing it that way because I, I don't think it would work very well. Welcome to give it a shot and try using the outline method. I don't think you would save any time doing it. Um, in that case, I would just have it redraw. The advantage would be, if you could do it that way, um, you notice that in this case, I'm not trying to redraw this image. I'm not trying to redraw those pixels. So this is an exact representation of that original image. The only thing I'm doing is I'm trimming off the outside. In the other case where I'm tracing the image, I'm I'm definitely removing the qual or I'm definitely affecting the quality of this image. It may not be a big deal if the image is really small, but if it's a large, like in this case it's the size of an entire piece of paper, you would be able to see it. So um, just be mindful of what you're actually drawing. If it's a small figure, I would just use the image tracing method to reproduce this and then kind of delete in the inside sections instead of trying to create an outline. Um, but if it's a much bigger image, you may want to take that risk. Okay, so that's all. Um, that is how to, those are just some minor details that kind of why it shows one method over the other. But here you go, this is a representation of this protein in Adobe Illustrator.